I need to talk to you guys about the One Football app. See, the One Football app is the best football app there is out there, and I use it for a load of different reasons. It's great for transfer rumours, team news, and starting 11s, which is actually really useful when I'm making these tactical videos. On top of that, you can now watch game highlights and even live matches, all on the One Football app. And believe it or not, it actually gets even better than that, because now you can do it all for free if you use the link in the description down below. So make sure to get in the description, press the link and download the One Football app right away. Trust me, you guys will not regret downloading this app. It really is great. Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel. I hope you're all having a good week. If you're a Manchester United fan, which you probably are if you clicked on this video, then you're probably having maybe a good week, but a bit of a confusing one because we are, at the moment, we are constantly being bombarded with different transfer news, different headlines, rumours of players that are being linked with the club. Now, for a bit of context, this is Wednesday morning when I'm recording this video, so things may have changed by the time it's uploaded on Thursday. However, Monday night, TalkSport broke the news that Matthias Cunha was being linked with a move to Manchester United for about 50 million. Now, since then, we haven't seen too many concrete links, but I think it's quite an interesting rumour that we're seeing. However, since then, we've seen Casemiro being linked with the club, Jao Felix being linked with the club, Cody Gakpo continues to be linked with the club, whilst also Rabio, who we all thought was almost guaranteed to sign, that's now completely gone out of the window and he's not coming. So, for United fans, it is quite confusing at the moment. On the pitch, it's horrible. Off the pitch, it's a mess. And then, like, in the papers, on social media, we're just hearing so many different stories from everywhere. So let me know what players you want to see videos on. We're starting with Matthias Cunha today. But let me know if you want a video on Gakpo, Casemiro, Felix in particular. Like I said, by the time this video comes up, there's probably 34 more players that we've been linked with. So, just get in the comments down below and let me know what players you want to talk about. But today, as you can tell by the title, and as I've already said, we are going to be talking about Matias Cunha. Now, Matias Cunha is Brazilian, he's 6 foot tall and in his early 20s, currently playing for Atletico Madrid. So the question is, if he was to sign, how does he fit into this Manchester United team? And actually, it's quite a difficult question because I'm not too sure what position he would be playing. Now... Perhaps most naturally, Matias Cunha is a bit of an attacking midfielder, which may suggest that he comes in and takes Bruno Fernandes' position here. However, this is Bruno Fernandes. We're talking about the wages he's on, the things like that. I think it's unlikely that Fernandes gets dropped from this team, especially when you've got Eriksen and Van der Beek as well. So I don't think Cunha is being signed to play attacking midfield. The other option is perhaps to place, uh, replace Fred, because Cunha is a very hard-working player, particularly off the ball. So perhaps he could play this role where he's offering creativity going forward, but also defensive work going the other way. But again, I just think against the best teams, probably defensively, he doesn't want to drop into these areas too much. So again, I think Fred will keep his place in the team. The other option is the right wing with uh, Jadon Sancho dropping out. Sancho so good, I don't think that will happen. And now an interesting position is the left wing. Now, this is a position that Cunha has played a lot in the past and Rashford is really struggling for form. So perhaps Matias Cunha could come in and play this role. Now, like Rashford, he is right-footed. He's about six foot tall. He's quick, off the mark. He's strong. But the only issue is, stylistically, Ten Hag is using quite wide wingers at the moment. We often see Shaw tucking in here with Rashford holding the width. I don't think that really suits Cunha because he constantly wants to come inside here and then create. So I don't think the left wing spot quite works either. So that leaves us with up front. Now... Currently, the options are Ronaldo and Anthony Martial. However, we've all seen the papers, we've all seen the headlines. Ronaldo is being heavily linked with a move away from the club over the next two weeks. So I think that is where Matias Cunha could come into the team and compete with Anthony Martial. However, if Martial keeps, uh, keeps up with his injury problems that he's had over the past two seasons, then Cunha could find himself being the starting striker for this team. So the question is, what sort of striker is he? I am just going to quickly interrupt because we do have another sponsor for today's video, and that is JerseyFIFA.com, the website you need to head to right away to get yourself the latest and greatest football shirts, all at an extremely affordable price. The link will be in the description below, so head there right away to get yourself a great shirt, again at a great price. Now back to the video. So as you can probably tell by the fact that I've said he can play in five different positions already in this video, you probably get the idea that Matias Cunha is a very versatile forward who, like I said, he can play in different positions, which means he is very complete. He isn't a player who just wants to stay in the box here and do that work. He isn't a player who just dribbles, and he isn't a player who just drops deep. He kind of has a bit of everything to his game. Now, I think for youngish players in their early 20s, that can be a good thing, but it can also be a negative. 
because he's a bit of a jack of all trades. But is he really excellent in any of these areas? He's good on the left wing. He's good on the right wing. He's good as an attacking midfielder. And he is good as a centre forward. But is he really excellent in any of those positions? I would argue perhaps not at this moment in his career. But that could certainly change if he's given enough time in one position to really develop and master a position. So that's not too much of a concern. But right now, I don't think he is really elite in any position by any means. However, what moving position does mean is that he's a very well-rounded footballer. And that is what this United team needs at the moment. Uh, if we talk about Anthony Martial, what he was offering in pre-season, we will regularly see him stretching de the defence in behind and chasing through balls over the top. And we were also, of course, seeing him drop into these areas to try and link the play, whilst also creating room for others to run in behind. Now, that sort of sums up Cunha perfectly. And we'll start with talking about the counter-attack. So let's get some defenders here like this for the other team. And let's say United are in a defensive position, but win the ball and look to counter. Cunha is a player that loves to drop into this area to get the ball. And then he uses that size of his. Like I said, he's six foot tall, just over. And he's very strong, very, very strong. So he's excellent at holding players off. So what he loves to do is get the ball into this sort of area, turn. And then he's looking for these channels in this area here. And then also in this area here, threading balls in behind. Almost a bit Harry Kane-esque what he does for Tottenham. So that is something that Cunha could certainly bring to this team. However, when you play for a team like United, as the season develops, I think we assume they're going to dominate the ball a bit more than they are right now. So he will also need to do things against the tighter of defences. Now, fortunately, this is an area where he's pretty good again. So again, he isn't a player that wants to go and stay in the box. He does want to get involved in the game. Unsurprising for a player that's played midfield. He's used to getting touches on the ball. But... He isn't a player that just kind of goes sideways for the sake of it. Yes, he can come in and do this link play, and he is quite good at creating chances and just kind of keeping position for his side. But what interests me more is the way that he loves to get the ball into feet here. And then, like I said, some players will just pop a simple pass off. Not Cunha. He really likes to turn and then drive aggressively at the heart of the defence. Now, perhaps that's something that's made easier for him in La Liga, where the standard of the midfields particularly from a defensive point of view, isn't always the highest, perhaps that's fair to say, I think you'll agree. However, it's still something that he does very, very well, and not a lot of players do. And he actually reminds me a little bit of Luis Suarez in this way, where he's got that real tenacity driving with the ball at his feet. United have players who are good dribblers, Rashford, Sancho, Martial. They're very good technical footballers. But Cunha's got that real drive and that bit between his teeth when he gets the ball. And I think that's something that this United team needs. Now, importantly for a young player... When he gets into these areas, he's got good decision making on the ball as well. So if we talk about someone like Rashford, at times he will let's put a defender in. He'll beat his man here or in this area here. But then he makes a poor decision on the ball, either shooting when he should pass or passing when he should shoot it. However, Cunha doesn't really have that in his game at the moment. And actually his decision making is really impressive. So he will do his work on the ball. He loves to dribble and beat players. However, then when he gets into these areas, he very often makes the right decision, whether that is taking an early shot, which is a bit of a trait of his, before the keeper can set themselves, or whether that's trying to create a chance for one of his forwards. And if he was to join United, then he would offer a bit of both. We would see him dropping in and linking the play, we would see him turning and driving at the defence, but we would also see him creating chances for his teammates. The question is, if he's going to come in and play as the striker, can he score enough goals? Now, over the past decade or so, we've seen strikers, like traditional strikers, being less of a thing, scoring less goals with uh, false nines really coming into the game. However, this year that seems to be changing with Darwin Nunes and Erling Haaland in particular being brought into the Premier League. The question is, can Cunha keep up with the goals that they will score? Now, I know Nunes just got suspended, but he will still score goals over the course of the season. And Haaland will as well, I think we all know that. Can Cunha really compete with those numbers? Well, that's where the question mark lies. I think he's great as an all-round player. But does he actually give this team enough goals? He didn't really with Atletico Madrid. Now, that's backed up when we look at his numbers. Six goals isn't great. To be fair, he didn't play too much football, which is important to remember. Now, to be fair, some people will see that alone as a bit of a warning sign. If he couldn't get into the Atletico team, why should he get into this United team? However, if you talk to Atletico Madrid fans, their general feeling is actually that he was one of their informed strikers last year. They just didn't really use him because of having Suarez and Antoine Griezmann. So, don't necessarily see those lack of minutes as a sign of his performances. 
However, perhaps what we can look at as a sign of his performances is the goals scored compared to expected goals. So, yes, he didn't play a ton of football last season. When he did play, he scored a few goals, but not enough. Now, using the expected goals model, we can see that he should have scored 7.44 goals last season. That's what, like, basically, if you give a 100 strikers the exact chances that he had, you would expect majority of them to score at least seven goals. He didn't do that. He got six. So that's a little bit of concern. I think when you're looking to bring a new striker in, you are looking at his underlying metrics and that isn't enough goals, especially when it's under his XG. You're typically looking for a player to be one or two goals above their XG. So that would be a concern. However, when you look at his more all round game, I think it's slightly more impressive. 74th percentile for non-penalty goals. It's not bad at all for a player who didn't get too much football, so he wasn't always sharp, and he was playing in a slightly interesting system with Atletico Madrid. We know they're not the most attacking side in the world, and also his non-penalty XG is pretty good, 0.53 per 90, putting him in the 92nd percentile. And then also non-penalty XG and XA, which is expected assists, is also very impressive in the 91st percentile. So not only is he going to get in goal scoring positions himself, which is a good sign, he's also going to create chances for others. The questions will lie in these areas. Now, the passes attempted for me is not an issue because like I said, Atletico Madrid aren't the most dominant team that have all the ball in the world, so that obviously affects a player's numbers. The slightly more concerning things are things like pass completion. However, it's not the biggest biggest issue in the world for a striker. If we go back to Ajax last season, the way Ten Hag used Sebastian Haller, he weren't really a player that was dropping in link in the play, he weren't super efficient with his passing, so I don't think it's too much of an issue. I think actually perhaps what Ten Hag is more interested in is these defensive numbers down here. Now, that might sound a little bit strange when we're talking about a forward or a striker to focus on the defensive numbers, but these are really impressive. Now, if we looked at one side of the coin, we do have to look at the other side. And again, these numbers will be boosted by the fact that he played in quite a defensive system at times last year. However, regardless, the 95th percentile for pressures is very, very impressive. 21.89 pressures per 90 minutes. If we compare that to Ronaldo, United's current number 9, he was averaging less than 7 per 90. And actually, he is in the bottom 1% in Europe's top 5 leagues for strikers committing to pressures. That's a real alarm bell. Ronaldo will bring a lot of goals, but to be in the bottom percentile for pressures is really concerning. And I think it's this all-round game which Ten Hag really likes about Cunha, and it's his ability to defend, but also get into the goal-scoring positions and create chances for others. His decision-making is good, he's tenacious on the ball with his dribbling, good decision-making, he's at a good age. It looks like a pretty good move. Now, the fee that's being spoken about is a lot of money, 50 million. And Fabrizio Romano reckons Madrid won even more than that, which to me is way more than what he's worth, in my honest opinion. Like I said, I think he's good in a lot of positions, but is he great in any? That's the question. And that's where I want to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Is he good enough to be United's main man, the main striker for next season? I'm a little bit unsure. I think if it was cheaper, this is a signing that I would be going, yeah, get him in because he's such a well-rounded player. He fits the profile of what Ten Hag wants. He's technically sound. He's tenacious. He's hardworking. He sets a standard. He's physically strong. So I think he ticks a lot of boxes. The question is just, does he, is he of that really high level that United need? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.